Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 16th of February 2014 and ending Friday the 21st. Happy Valentine's Day and Happy President's Day from TradeSite.com. Charts as usual brought to you by the terrific eSignal 11 platform. Uh, wow, we've been saying this for a while now. It feels like every weekend it's fairly much the same story, but here is the dollar index. The 13 sell signal still in place with the risk line. Haven't really rolled over a ton. At this point, I would kind of say that signal's worn itself out. Uh, it wasn't a very exciting signal to begin with, as I said when it happened, but the risk line is being respected. <clears throat> we are dead flat now for one, two, three and a half months on the dollar index. This is, uh, you can go back a long time. This is the narrowest I've seen the dollar index stay for three and a half months. I feel very fortunate that we're even just hanging in the game with these trades with this type of, not just intraday ranges now, but also just total ranges. It's it's horrible. Uh, we got the red static trend line below and the green static trend line above. I won't rehash stuff that we've been having to talk about every week. It's the same over and over again. Euro dollar just as tight. I mean, look at this. Basically, a 300 pip range for the last four months on the euro dollar, except for the little dip here for a little bit. And completely using the two static trend lines, the red line and the green line. That is remarkable, if unfortunate, <laughs> from a trading perspective. Uh, let's take a look at the pound on the daily actually breaking out finally looking at uh, some action there this looks like weakness in the dollar play so maybe if the dollar is going to finally go somewhere it's going to be lower and break that uh, red static trend line on the uh, dollar index chart and here's the Aussie dollar uh, this is basically by the way let's put in projection mode and you can see that Friday was nine bars up on the Aussie all right, what did we get uh, this week during the week? Here's a look at the euro dollar um, for the week. It was 160 pips of total range for the week. Uh, this is in 30-minute bars. You can see we had a 13 sell signal back on Tuesday, and that was the top until uh, Thursday's activity. Got a good move down off of that signal. Um, we're nine bars into a new comer count here. Uh, overall, the ranges were pretty poor. I mean, it was it's basically a new spike here and a new spike here. Other than that, there really wasn't a lot of activity for the week, not very uh, exciting. <clears throat> Here's the uh, pound, which was a little more interesting, obviously. Uh, it did see uh, 360 pips, 70 pips for the week, which is better range there. We had a winner in there. We had a winner on the euro as well, but uh, a couple stop outs and everything given the, the narrow range. Here's the Aussie during the week. Not much there either. 150 pips of range for the whole week on the Aussie. So, you know, again, we just need to get out of this range. We've been talking about this for a while. There's not much else to rehash. Let's look at the economic data that's coming out this week. Now, we do have the U.S. bank holiday on Monday. Sunday going into Monday, we'll have no calls and probably a dead session. Uh, so here we go. U.K., uh, never mind. Retail sales out of New Zealand at 4.45 p.m. Eastern time to start the week. Preliminary GDP out of Japan. <clears throat> U.K.'s right move HPI. Uh, Aussie's new motor vehicle sales and Japan's revised industrial production number. Uh, you got that U.S. bank holiday I talked about. Monetary meeting uh, minutes from the last meeting out of Australia uh, and this statement out of the Bank of Japan. So you have a rate announcement out of the Bank of Japan uh, late Monday going into Tuesday. Current account out of Europe, Italian trade balance. The U.K. does a data dump, CPI, PPI, and RPI all coming out at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time Tuesday morning. Zoo economic sentiment out of Europe and Germany. Ecofin meetings continue. U.S. has got the Empire State Manufacturing Index, tick long-term purchases, and the NAHB Housing Market Index. Uh, Australia's got the CB Leading Index, Wage Price Index, <clears throat> Japan's All Industries Activity Report. U.K.'s got their unemployment rate. This is Wednesday at 4.30 a.m. That could be an important data for the pound, uh, data point for the pound. German 10-year bond auction, wholesale inventories out of Canada, building permits, PPI, housing starts out of the U.S., New Zealand, PPI. Trade balance out of Japan, China's HSBC flash manufacturing PMI. Trade balance out of Switzerland, uh, Europe's German PPI, French CPI. This is all on Thursday. Uh, all the European flash manufacturing PMI and flash services PMI, various countries plus the broad European one. Spanish 10-year bond auction, UK 10-year bond auction. In the U.S., we have CPI. That's one of our big three. We're going to be half size still this week because of these narrow ranges, but I'd be less than half size ahead of that number. Uh, unemployment claims, that's a weekly number. Flash manufacturing PMI out of the U.S. Europe's consumer confidence, Philly Fed out of the U.S., mortgage delinquencies out of the U.S., uh, Yellen testifies, Natty Gas, 
crude oil inventories pushed together because of the holiday on Monday. Retail sales out of the UK. Public sector net borrowing out of the UK. This is on Friday. Core CPI and retail sales out of Canada on Friday. Existing home sales uh, out of the US on Friday. That's it. So the big one's the CPI. And we do have the holiday, so it's a short week. Uh, we'll be helping you make money in the lab. We hope to see you there. Everybody have a great long weekend.